wasn't planning to go out today, but it is an absolutely gorgeous winter day. Cold, but sunny, clear blue sky. And it just feels like it's calling me to go outside. And who am I to deny the call of the wild or the, the semi-wild? I'm gonna go to a local nature reserve. So yeah, let's go. by the bullet before any of you mention yes <laughs> I know my binoculars are absolutely massive yeah big and bulky but <laughs> I absolutely love them came down to the water's edge and I'm being a bit quiet because I don't know, it just feels like you should whisper on a bird reserve. And the, the reflection in the pond is absolutely glorious. It reflects it right back. At this time of year all the, the frogs and, and toads will be actually hibernating down in the water so you won't start to see them come up until early March time. But while I was here I actually saw a jay fly up into a nearby tree. Although they're somewhat common a bird don't actually tend to see them. We favour woodland areas but they're normally high up in the trees so unless you're really looking and there's a lot less leaf litter on the trees they can be quite hard to spot but the best time of year would generally be around autumn when they're caching a lot of their acorns and other seeds for winter and then in winter when they're, they're scurrying around digging them back up to store their fat reserves over winter. Jay's probably most distinctive feature is this bright electric blue on their wing feathers so if you see a spark of blue flying up in the canopies, there's going to be nothing else other than a jay. It's these caching animals like squirrels and jays that are largely responsible for afforestation, so planting of new trees and forests because they'll forget where they are or lose them or be unable to dig them up for whatever reason and so they actually grow into a sapling and that's how a lot of trees spread their seeds. So there you go, if you're walking through a, a native broadleaf woodland, Oakland woodland, it was likely seeded largely by jays and squirrels. frozen. It's 2pm in the afternoon. Beautiful patterns. tells you British birds aren't pretty, you must show them goldfinch, and so I do them. It's really one of the easiest bird IDs I think to know, because there's nothing else that has their colouring. They're a kind of sable brown coating, and they've got an unmistakable red face, and then the yellow stripes on there.
anyone that thinks just going out for a walk and watching wildlife is boring, I think they just kind of experienced it. It's like a meditation. I mean, it is a meditation. Your mind just completely drifts off everything else. And it's like your mind just gets absorbed into the landscape. Do you know? Do you understand what I mean? Like, just take a look at this landscape for just 10 seconds. 10 seconds of your time. And just see how relaxed it makes you. absorbed by the most simplest of things, but sometimes the most... I'm sorry, there's a heron over there. I also can't believe how still herons are. I mean, it's literally like they're freeze-framed in time. The tiniest muscle moves when they don't want to. They're so hard to spot when they're still, especially when they're amongst the reed beds. Even though their neck is a slightly different colour to the reed beds, you might as well be a reed stalk. It's not until they move that you can really pick them out. It's good to look for the black eye stripe across there. That can stand out a bit more than the rest of them. But they really encourage you to be still and reflective. And to whisper clearly. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's the call of the chaffinch in the background. I always try to make bird sound sound like something else that I can relate it to. So for me, a chaffinch sounds like, you know when you drop a bouncy ball, the first bounce is quite high and then they get smaller, it's doo 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 doo. That's what the chaffinch call sounds like to me and that's how I try and pick it out. You just love the golden light before the sun comes down. It's like it's telling you to, to wind down for the evening, but instead of your evening water bath, it's an, an evening bath with golden light. Everything just sparkles and shines, it looks completely different and wondrous. So golden! So brown is boring. It's absolutely glorious when the sun hits it. I've always felt like to see a crocodile in here. Wouldn't seem a solid place. It just feels a bit swampy and boggy, doesn't it? This little robin is so tame. It's less than a meter away from me, just coming to eat some crumbs. Unbelievable. You can often tell if it's a, uh, a native or a European robin that's come over for winter, because our native robins are, are really used to being around humans, having them around, and so they're not shy at all. Unlike most birds, they, they generally won't flee when you pass. They might just do their alarm call, which I actually just heard them. The Tick, 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 tick. Kind of sounds like they're telling you off. Um, whereas their European counterparts typically come from people, places where they're not so used to people, and so they're a lot more scatty. They're also a little bit bigger, and their colours tend to be a lot duller. So they tend to be darker in colour, and their their red breast, the robin red breast, tends to be not as pronounced. Just realises. <laughs> 15 minutes till the reserve shuts and I'm on completely the wrong side of it to the exit. So I'm absolutely power walking it back. 
unreasonably out of breath for the level of exertion that I'm putting into this. So yeah, this is where I'm going to say goodbye for this week. I feel so much more relaxed and peaceful after that walk and I hope that um, if you're watching my video you could feel some of that too. If you've got a nature reserve near you, why not go spend some time there this weekend? Thank you for joining me and maybe see you along on my next walk. Okay, bye!